At the beginning of the world, God made the two great lights. He called the animals by twos into the ark to keep them alive. Two cherubim flanked the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. And in Genesis 21 and Exodus 22, we read accounts of two men taking an oath. In Nehemiah 12, two choirs take their stand in the house of God. And in the book of Zechariah, the prophet speaks of taking for himself two staffs, one he called favor, and the other union. St. Luke records that Jesus sent out his disciples in pairs ahead of him to every city and place where he himself was going to go. What is the meaning of all these dynamic duos? The writer of Deuteronomy declares, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one but we are not one without him. Our God comes as our helper and our strength, and God calls us into a rich tapestry of relationships with one another to mirror this divine dynamic. We were made for intimacy with God and with our fellow human beings, for peace with God and peace between people. And yet this balanced community, this goodwill is broken. Adam turned against Eve, ruling over her. Cain against Abel, murdering him. At the creation of the universe, God declared, it is not good to be alone. To be by oneself is to be vulnerable, to be without a helper, to be without strength. It is to be scattered. In 1 Samuel 11, when King Saul makes war against the Ammonites, the text says that of Israel's enemies, no two of them were left together, a symbolic signal of just how scattered they were. The writer of Ecclesiastes uses this same imagery to weep over the world. These verses are a lament over the desolation of those whom such rulers neglect, abuse, trample, those forced to wear the heavy and uneven yoke of slavery, those left friendless. Against this same backdrop in Matthew 18, Jesus too is speaking first of the disempowered and disenfranchised, beginning with victims of religious systems of exploitation and of the wicked ones who propagate and profit from such systems. He has only just a few verses above called a child to himself and set the child before his disciples and warned them of what would happen to anyone who caused such a little one to fall. And so the most egregious violators of the kingdom order of Jesus Christ are those who set out stumbling blocks, who hoard and wield power and wealth in God's house in selfish and cruel ambition towards empire. Like bone from bone, acts of violence splinter and separate us. Jesus speaks here of those who infiltrate the church and unsettle the perfectly balanced safety, comfort, encouragement, and strength that should be present wherever two are gathered together. And here again we return to the power of two, the strength of witness a concept that oppressed communities all around the world know very well. Here, Ecclesiastes 4.10, if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. And verse 12, if one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. To be a witness then is to be in resistance. To come as a witness is to stand shoulder to shoulder, equally yoked, offering strength and working alongside a brother or sister in pursuit of revolutionary peace. When harnessing this power of two in service of the justice and peace of God, we mimic heaven itself. In the throne room of God, our Messiah stands as our witness in victory over the accuser, 
that lying lord of stumbling blocks. Jesus Christ testifies about his beloved children like he speaks about his own body. Do you receive such a child in his name? In so doing, you receive Jesus himself. In terms of the ministry of Jesus Christ to the church, to those devastated by systemic poverty, by prejudice, to the grief-stricken, to the violated and traumatized, for such was Jesus, bruised and broken. Jesus Christ destabilizes the accepted social order in the kingdom of this world and sets it in proper position using divine kingdom principles. The first are now last and the last first. A revolutionary rebalancing of the unjust scales of earth. Justice that begins in the house of God.